I've just made five videos with arching. I think we've covered close to an hour. Okay, sorry. Let let let's let. What what's the uh, what was that question there? The brain. Uh, I'm just okay, a working here we class go. working class guy here. So we've just established that every very mediocre intelligence with a genius. It's 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 hard, you know. Well, I'm I'm not trying to get you on the ropes, but no, no, fact, that's okay. You can, am, you can. What we've established is that there might be a feeling of not being worthy oh, of yes, the lifestyle not worthy. that you yes. aspire to. Yes. So yes. you seem to come from an outsider's perspective with a uh, working class very much morality working class, and working yes. class sense of justice. Yes. Who believes he can get some uh, finger hold into the luxury world by buying secondhand goods yes. that he can hold in control, yes. and through the coattails of other more successful people get yes. a view into the world that he desires. Do you not feel worthy of this yourself? I, I suppose I don't. I suppose I feel that I've cheated to get into this, this exclusive room. Who have you cheated? I suppose I've cheated capitalism. Because I haven't paid the piper what, what it costs to enter this room. That's almost alarming that you'd say that. Yeah, I know, I know, but I think that's, I think, I think deep down, I, I do, I do have a feeling of, um, um, it, it's quite interesting this discussion here because it really nibbles at the essence of who we are as people. And I think to myself, I think the problem is, is that it is this self loathing we have. They had an interview with Alan Bond, whether you like Alan Bond or not is irrelevant, but he, he, he did a lot of, Incredible things, not so good things, not so bad. He, he won the America's Cup, and he he he, he uh, quite quite a shrewd businessman, who who wrecked many lives as well. There's an ugly side to him, but he said that if he didn't have this inferiority, he he wouldn't have been pressing to to, to push the envelope further and further and further, and it was this quest which pushed him pushed him to to achieve greatness and ultimately led to his downfall because of the, the greed and it's associated with that. And I suppose in my own, own, my own psyche itself there, I suppose it all comes down to an inferiority complex where I felt inferior to people. So I decided at a young age to be better than them. I wanted the best things in the world. Okay, so what's the best things in the world? What are the best things? So, so you look at this. So, 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 I, I remember I tried with food. So, instead of having normal steak, you'd say, well, I want to try ribeye fillet. Then I want to try wagyu. I want to try Japanese steak with the with the fat and the content. So you, you push the envelope. I want the absolute best. And I suppose when you look at things like watches and that you say well the paddocks and the the breguet these things are amazing then you look at every facet of my life I wanted the best thing you could have you know, I remember seeing a, a, doc, a photo of, of Idi Amin you remember Idi Amin sure and he had these Cartier glasses I thought I want a pair of those he had the Cartier Cartier C's at the side and and and, and I wanted to try them so do you remember about five minutes ago when I yes. asked you about millstones that you might have? Millstones. <clears throat> do you think the feeling of inferiority might in fact be I, the greatest of the millstones? I, I, it certainly could be, yes. Yes, I'm an inferior being. That's correct. Yes, very, very flawed being. Because, you know, I wasn't loved as an ethnic group. You know, we were Ukrainians and you weren't the, you know, you, you kind of, you're just the, 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 the peasant classes. So you have a feeling of inferiority, which my father had coming as a new immigrant to Australia, as second-class citizens. And then, of course, you had the, the feeling of inferiority because you never had money. You had, to nick, you had to horse trade to get these things. You haven't really paid the admission price. You've done it through the back door. So I suppose that that is probably a very true thing. It, it's a cornerstone of, of my own insecurities and... Uh, frailties as a human being. You talked a bit about your psyche mm. and the Greeks actually had a concept of the psyche being the soul. Well, that's where the word comes from, the, the Greek mm -hmm. word for soul. Do you mm -hmm. believe you have a soul? That's a very interesting concept because um, have, having a soul um, 
gives you a feeling that there's more to the just the, the flesh and the bones and the meat. There's something extra there. Is there something extra there? Do I have a soul? That's a very good question. The, uh, the Jews believed that the soul was carried in the blood. Mm -hmm. The Polynesians believe it's in the bones. Yes. The Greeks believe that the seat of reason, etc., was, well, not in the brain, but it was in the heart mm -hmm. itself. And so they were trying to find some physical mm -hmm. place all these cultures where, where it was. Yes. Now, not to put it in a physical part of the body, yes. but maybe in the things that you own. Is your soul located in any of your objects? Yes. Or in any of your family? Or where, where yes. is your soul? I think, I think, to be honest with you, I, I hope I have a soul. I hope there is, I have a soul. I hope there is a soul there. I hope there's a soul. Now, what do you mean by that? Is there a feeling of bankruptcy? Well, I hope there is a soul, as opposed to there is nothing there. It's just the flesh and the bones. I hope there is something extra in us. And so this essence of Archie, is that what you've invested into your programs? Or have you invested into your children? Or maybe your watchers? I think the material goods, I have an unhealthy obsession with material goods. I have a very unhealthy attachment to material goods. Yes, I do. I, I concede this. I You've concede seen the movie this. Pulp Fiction? Yes. Where they have a, a briefcase and they open it up and mm -hmm. all you see is a golden glow. Mm -hmm. And the story behind it is, well, in fact, inside the briefcase was a person's soul. If yes. you look to that HPP case yes. you have over there, Yes. Yes. is Paul's soul in there? It could be. Is it in your goods? It is in my goods. Yes. What sort of a soul do you have, Paul? What sort of a soul? I, th I think it's a. Um, you know, I, I think I think the soul itself there is. Uh, I think it's a good soul. It's a kind soul. It's a luxury soul. It's a soul who who likes well-made things, and it's not just shitters. You know, I think it's important to to separate the rubbish from the good. I think my soul is, I don't like to waste. I'm very much not against waste. I like to, I don't like to see waste. I, I, that really irritates me. So my soul itself, what is my soul then? Um, I think I look at things and I, I can, I feel that they have, they're more to it than just the wood or the leather that's in it. There's more to it there. Like that watch is just more than the steel it's made from in the parts. It's something special. It has that, it has that that wow, that it pops. So so we spoke earlier regarding some of the animals that you love and some of the animals that you hate. I know yes. you like bears. Yes. You don't like the grand psycho lion. We don't like the lion much. and we don't like sharks. So okay. do you have any, any belief in totem spirits? Ooh, that's getting very, very... Um, so the reason I ask that question mm -hmm. is there's no intrinsic value necessarily in a bear no. talking about it being a totem. No. It simply means something to you. It's a way of you putting uh, some of your idea of your soul or yourself into something uh, which yes. has got form. Yes. What would you see your totem as being? A totem? Ah, jeez, that's... Um, how about one of those lead toy soldiers there? Yeah, why is that? Oh, I think it's, it's, it's kind of... It's many years to make it. It's, 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 it's the perfectionism. It's, it's a long long traditional art to make these things why a soldier why a soldier um i i i suppose growing up in the western world we kind of look towards the the more the um i suppose because we won the war that's why <laughs> a soldier we won we won the war it's interesting because a soldier wears its value, its mm -hmm. worth, its rank on either mm -hmm. its shoulder or on its sleeve. Yes. Probably similar to what you said earlier, where how can I have something that's recognisable that gets me into the club? Mm -hmm. I suppose the best way to say it is, like that. I feel like a soldier, but I'm not a commissioned officer. No matter how much I wanted to be a commissioned officer, I'm just a, uh, a non-commissioned officer. Now, where would you be in the sergeant's mess or the enlisted band's mess? I think the enlisted man drafted, drafted against his will, forcibly taken in. Yes. But you'd be drinking the good wine. Oh no, 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 no. I think I think I'd be in in the riffraff tent. Yeah, I'm, I think the inferiority comes in there. You know. Yep. Yeah.
Well, we're drawing full circle to this, but we've discovered a lot about Paul Pluter, the man who has many alter egos. That's exactly it. So what, what's the answer to happiness? What, what does this mean? Can you tell me what it means? What should I do for happiness and well, fulfillment in my life? I told you the story from the Bible of a man who had his fields full of grain. Yes. And he was lying in bed. Yes. And he was content. And he thought, yes. tomorrow I'm going to harvest all of yes. that grain. Yes. And I'm going to put it into the silos that yes. I've just built. Yes. And then God said to him, Fool, your soul will be demanded of you this very night. Yes. He said, Don't invest your hopes in earthly things and don't use them as replacement for people. Yes. And unfortunately, that's something that we're all guilty of doing. I don't like people. I prefer material goods. You know that? Yeah. I can say that. I, I really do prefer material goods because I think material goods, it's, um, I, I think quality material goods are more than just the bits that are put together. It's, it's hundreds of years of technology and understanding how to make something. Do you not see it that way? Um, I see them as just fallible things, things which we don't own but we hold for a period of time. I see. But don't you see any beauty in them or the craftsmanship or the... The, the hundreds of years to make it or no? I do but um, it's such a transient society now that what's considered valuable now will change in the next um, century. For yes. example, you have a look now with things being made by IKEA for example. Yes. Um, people are buying it. I'm not yes. saying it's good gear but the mass yes. produced goods which our grandparents had you cannot yes. even give away to an antique shop anymore. Things fall out of favour. Yes. I see. These are sheep. All. These are sheep that follow that there, but That's don't right. they? But we've talked about the super ego, and, and you're a conformist as much as all of us. Yes, but I mean, I mean, you got, you can't, you must see these things as being more than just this. Look at this. This is, this is something I wanted for twenty years. I remember I went into Bhutan. I wanted this bag, right? In in 1997, I went and wanted this bag, right? This very same bag here, right? I wanted this, right? And it was $4,400 in 1996, which is about, adjusted for inflation, about $8,000 today, right? So eventually I got one. I got one, right? And, I mean, it's just a bag to you. Have a smell of that there. It's just a... But see, see, this bag is just more than a bag. This has got, this is a, this is, this is, it's a heavy bag because if you feel the weight on that there, it's heavy because they age the timbers in this for 10 years so it doesn't bow. That's so clever, don't you think? Sure. They used old poplar, not just young trees, old ones so they don't bow. That's how it keeps its shape. That's a, that's a that's not a Chinese bag. It's more to it. This is this is this is this is two hundred years of French excellence to make that. One of the videos you referred me to this week yes. was about pensioners being put into prison. Yes. And one yes. of the pensioners said he was so thankful to have a cellmate. Would you rather be, if you had to be, yes. in a cell with a good cellmate? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather be surrounded by some of these luxury goods that you adore? Oh, definitely luxury goods. Fuck the cellmate. And here endeth the lesson. <laughs> Hi, guys. A fan of mine has been inspired to start a wristwatch series of his own. Bitter Poet Madman. That's the name of his channel, and the show is called It's Complicated. That's right, It's Complicated. It looks like he has some nice examples. I saw he has a Rolex. Rolex! He recently just got an Omega. He talks watch accessories, does reviews, unboxings, and talks about new and pre-owned wristwatches. Again, the channel name is Bitter Poet Madman. Bitter Poet Madman. So why don't you fuckers let that fucker know 
what you think of that. Bitter Poet Madman Channel. Hey yo, I'm Bitter Poet Madman, the host of It's Complicated, a wristwatch series. We talk about luxury watches, we talk about affordable watches, we're going to review those watches, we're going to talk about the watch market in general. I'm going to tell you how to get good bargains, I'm going to show you how to find good watches used, I'm going to show you how to find affordable watches new, and how to save money on that grail piece that you're looking at. To me on Patreon, that allows you to send a small monthly amount to me every month. It can be a dollar, it can be a hundred dollars, whatever you can afford. The next way you can help me is, well guys, I, I really need some money to keep things going. Paid reviews. On the Paul Pluto channel, I run paid reviews. For as little as 20 US dollars, I'll give you an opinion of your collection, of what you're looking at, I'll try and answer. There's heaps of other ways you can help me. I do telephone consultancy. For 50 US dollars, I will talk to you on Skype or WhatsApp and answer your horological or personal problems. Any questions, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Now guys, please help us out. Look down below and if you, if you, if you could help us out, I will stay here and make videos full-time on YouTube.